Hi, and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about CPR and the differences that we use for adults, children, and infants, and also a mention of the differences for BLS, which is basic life support, which our healthcare providers use. So first, let me introduce myself. My name is Kim, and this webinar is being presented through the Save a Life Initiative, which is sponsored by the DISC Foundation. I'm a nurse. I live in the United States, right outside Washington, DC, and I'm the medical educator for the DISC Foundation. The DISC Foundation was created for the sole purpose of empowering others to save lives. So our goal is to give free healthcare education all around the world so we can expose more people to learn CPR. So welcome. For adults, we always start, is the scene safe? That's the same for every age. So for adults and children, if you're inside and you see someone that needs help or has collapsed, we don't wanna rush right in without checking and actually physically looking around at the situation to make sure it's safe for us also to care for that person try to come up with a quick reason of why they collapsed. Was there a collapse of furniture? Did they fall off of something? Is there a fire hazard or an electrical hazard? Is there a chemical or something in the air? Make sure that that is taken care of first before you step in. Same situation if you're outside. If you see a car accident and wanna help, make sure that there's no risk of fire. Is the gas leaking? Are there wires down? Uh, is there a weather or disaster happening? You need to be safe yourself. Next, we check to see if they are responsive. That means, can they hear us? Can they move? Are they conscious? So tap really hard on the shoulders and say, hey, are you okay? And be loud. If there's a response and they move around or mumble or open their eyes a little bit, that means they're conscious. You don't need to do CPR, but you can still call for help and stay with them and make sure it's safe until the ambulance arrives. If there's no response, we need to call for help right away. If someone else is around, tell them to call your emergency number and get an AED if there's one nearby and bring it to you. Next, we're going to check and see if they're breathing normally. So just get close to them and they should look like they're sleeping. They might be snoring. Um, but they should look like they're breathing okay. If they're not, that's when we start CPR. So if they are looking like they're sleeping or maybe they're snoring, they're breathing loudly, but you can see regular breathing, then again, we're gonna just stay with them and call for help and wait and make sure the scene is okay. If we need to do CPR, we look at them for a few seconds and they're not breathing, we're going right to chest compressions. So position yourself over their chest and interlock your hands. We put one hand over the other. It doesn't matter which one you do and start pushing hard on their chest. We're gonna count 30 and two rescue breaths and do that ratio until one of these other things happens. Either the AED shows up and someone can help put that on and you can continue chest compressions, or if they don't know how, you can pause for a moment to turn it on and put on the pads. Um, or help has arrived, the ambulance or paramedics. Or if the scene becomes unsafe, if something happens, a fire starts, or there's violence, you need to go. If it's safe to take the victim with you, you can do that. Um, you might see signs of life if you pause every two minutes is when we generally switch providers. If you're pausing at the two minute mark, you can check and see if they're breathing on their own or have any movement or response. Or if you were by yourself doing CPR and you haven't been able to get any help and it's been at least 20 minutes, it would be appropriate to stop at that moment or to take a break and then continue later and try to get help. So for children, there's only a few differences. Um, first of all, for children, we're going to call them children when we are about 12 months old, about a year old, to our teenagers. Teenagers can be grouped into the 
adult category, they're kind of on the border. So it's okay, whichever way you, you treat them. Um, you can treat them like adults though. We are always gonna be checking to see if this scene is safe. And same way, if it's safe, when we go in and help, we need to see if they're okay. So again, tapping uh, the shoulders and saying, hey, are you okay? And being really loud. If you know their name or hear their name called, it's helpful to say that too. It, it can sometimes get through to them. So whether they're responsive or not, uh, we're gonna call for help if we don't have to leave the scene. That means if someone else is there and can call or go get someone or go get to a phone, or if you have your cell phone, you can put it on speakerphone um, and not leave. Point is we don't wanna leave a child uh, if we're by ourselves and find them and they are not responsive. So again, if they're responsive, we're just gonna wait for them and call for help and make sure the scene is safe. But if they are not responding, we need to keep going and check and see if they're breathing. We take a look at them for a few seconds and see if they look like they're sleeping. Do we see their chest moving or hear any breathing or feel any air coming? Um, and again, if, if there is, we can just stay with them and wait for help to see what's happened. And if not, we need to start CPR. With children, we're going to do a quicker ratio. We're doing 15 chest compressions with two rescue breaths. Children often have respiratory problems, which will then cause respiratory arrest. And then a few minutes later, they will go into cardiac arrest. So that just means their breathing problems cause them to stop breathing, and then their heart will stop once they're not breathing anymore. So Doing it this way gives us more rescue breaths per minute than the adult would need. Adults are more likely to have cardiac problems, a heart attack or heart issue, heart rhythm issue that will, their heart will stop first and then that will cause the breathing to stop. So they're kind of opposite. So we're going to continue this two minutes, 15 and two with this ratio and we can switch providers at that point if you have someone else that can help you do CPR. If you have been by yourself and it's been two minutes of CPR, now you can take a minute if you do have to leave or run to a car, run to a building to get further help. Point being, adults that are in cardiac arrest, you wanna get help first and get that AED because they're most likely to be resuscitated by having an AED or getting an ambulance to the hospital so they can intervene and actually fix the cardiac problem, probably surgically. But with children, they're most likely to have an accident or an injury or an illness, which is causing a respiratory problem. So think of drowning and choking and asthma and anaphylaxis. So if we do CPR right away and don't take time away from them, we can often reverse that problem and catch them before they go into cardiac arrest. So that's the main difference with children is we're doing a different ratio and it's the time that you spend with them doing CPR instead of leaving to go get help. And again, we're gonna continue CPR at this ratio until one of these things happens, either help arrives, ambulance or someone else. You see signs of life when you take that break at two minutes, the scene becomes unsafe or you're too tired to continue. For infants, we have just two more differences. So infants is a baby that you could hold in your arms, generally less than 12 months. Same thing, check to see if the scene is safe and see what happened and why they collapsed. And then we're gonna check them for responsiveness. So we are not going to tap on them like we do for everyone else. You get the bottom of their foot and you just flick on the bottom. So you might have to take off their onesie or their socks or whatever they have on. If there's a response, again, we can call for help and wait with them. If there's no response, we're gonna call for help and then continue on to see if they are breathing normally. And again, we're not gonna leave this infant alone if we are by ourselves. Um, take them with you or send someone else if you need to go into a building to get help. If they don't look like they are sleeping and breathing normally, we're gonna start right away with our CPR. 
CPR for infants, we only need to do two or three fingers on their breastbone. We don't need to do the whole hands like we do for adults and children because they are so small. Same ratio that we do for children, 15 and two, and we're gonna continue that at that rate. Same rule that we have with our older children. If you have been by yourself and you did not have a cell phone and could not call for help, you need to do CPR for two minutes first, and then you can take a break and take that child with you and run for help. We're gonna keep going again until help arrives or we have the AED, we can put that on. You see signs of life, the scene becomes unsafe or we're too tired to continue. So for everyone, for our chest compressions, you're gonna do them on the lower half of the breastbone. So just find that bone right in the middle of the chest and then make sure you're on the bottom part of it and you're in the middle of the chest. That bone is actually pushing on the right side of the heart, which is perfect and that's what we want it to do because the heart is not pumping. So we're gonna push on that bone and we're gonna squeeze the heart and push the blood out of it. And the blood will go all around the body up to the brain and there's already oxygen in the blood. Everyone is gonna compress at 100 to 120 beats a minute. So that's the same for all ages. For the depth, we don't get out a ruler and check, but this just means if we're looking at them at the side and they're laying down on the ground, we're not gonna go halfway down. We need to go a little bit less than halfway down. And the bigger they are and the older they are, we need to push harder. So infants don't have to push much at all, just a few fingers down to that one and a half inches because they're small. But if we have full grown large adults, we're gonna be two hands and really pushing hard with our shoulders. Allow for complete chest recoil. That means when we push down, don't stay down at the bottom and just kind of push like that. Make sure that each one comes the whole way back up to where you started because think of we are pushing on the heart and pushing the blood out we need the blood to go all the way out and come back. So we need to leave room for that. If someone collapses on a couch or on a chair, bed or something like that, uh, or even in a car accident, we need to pull them out down onto the ground and they need to be flat on their back so that it works effectively. And every time we have any of these interruptions, which would be for checking the breathing or switching providers or using the AED, everything needs to be less than 10 seconds. Now for the opening airway, we have two ways to do it. Our regular way is head tilt chin lift, which is just what it sounds like. Push back on the head and lift up on the chin and just try to think of this airway here being really straight. If we suspect the person has a head, neck, or spinal injury, for example, a car accident that looks bad or a fall from over their height, you know, over five or six feet tall or two meters, then we're going to just try to open their mouth. We're not going to move anything on their jaw, like neck. So you want to create a tight seal using, uh, you can do mouth to mouth if you know the person um, and you choose to do so. Otherwise you need to have a mask, a pocket mask, a bag valve mask, or even just a barrier so that it has a filter on it. That's how we protect ourselves against communicable diseases. So no one is asking you to put your mouth on a victim's mouth that is a stranger to you. We don't need to do that. You can do hands only CPR at that point and just skip the ventilations. But if you do have an appropriate barrier, you can deliver two breaths, each one lasts one second. So we give a breath and we look at their chest and see if the chest rises and then do another one and then go back to chest compressions. If their chest doesn't rise, after the first breath, we're going to reposition everything, get that head tilt, chin lift going again, make sure this part is as straight as possible, make sure the mask is on tight, holding it down and getting a, a good seal and try it again. If we try it the second time and it's still not working correctly, we're just gonna move on. The most important thing is chest compressions. This person might have an injury 
or an obstruction in their airway. So we're not gonna waste time trying to figure that out. Just move on back to the chest compressions. And then here's a note about basic life support. So you can take this course, which is our more advanced CPR, if you are a healthcare provider. So if you work anywhere around people that you might need to help with resuscitation, you can take this course. So it's a more advanced. Our visual survey gets into more details than just looking for safety. So if you take that course, we explain that one a little bit more, what our BLS survey is. Um, and it's looking around to see how many victims, the mechanism of injury, what resources do you need, how many people need to come help, all that kind of stuff. So we're still checking for safety, checking for responsiveness, activating our emergency response system, and then opening the airway. Another difference for BLS is because we're healthcare providers, we'll check for breathing and pulse simultaneously. So in those few seconds when we're doing all this, we'll get down next to the victim and check the carotid pulse on the side that you are at and look for breathing at the same time. And then we know how to proceed from there. So here's an overview of everything we went over. Our chest compressions for adults, which can include teenagers is 30 and the ratio is 30 and two. For children and infants will be 15 and two. You should be going at the rate of 100 to 120 compressions a minute. And the depth is gonna get bigger, the bigger and older the person is. For an AED, they're very easy to use. They're automatic and they are designed for anyone in the community to be able to use without ever having seen it before. You need to just turn it on first. There's usually a big green button or a big power button. And then you just have to put the pads on. And there's even pictures on the pads that show you exactly where on the body they go. And it will talk to you and tell you exactly what you have to do. For rescue breaths, remember that we do need to open that airway first. Sometimes opening the airway in someone that has collapsed will just help them breathe and they'll just take a breath on their own and then we don't have to do CPR. So do that first. If you are doing ventilations with our rescue breaths, so that's with a bag valve mask, and you can do them at the same time as the chest compression. So if you do have different people available, then the rate for adults is five to six. Every five to six seconds, there's a ventilation. So that means every 10, they'll have 10 to 12 breaths a minute, which would be normal for an adult in this situation. And for our pediatrics, which is our children and infant, those we're gonna ventilate faster because of the reasons I mentioned previously, every two to three seconds. So that is a respiratory rate of 20 to 30 breaths per minute. So at this point, I wanna show you um, that you can also go to our YouTube channel, which is Disc Foundation. And we have so many videos on here that will help you learn all of these skills. We have our CPR, some full trainings, um, getting more detail into CPR, our ACLS, which is our advanced life support training. <coughs> Excuse me. PALS is our pediatric advanced life support. The BLS is our basic life support. And then down here, we have all the CPR videos. So you can click on this and there's a whole list and you can go through and get a lot of first aid, um, injury treatment, environmental injuries. There's poison, um, choking, everything is in here. So if you wanna learn more about these, you just have these little clips to go through and you can pick CPR, for children, for adults, the mask, the AED, it's all broken down here for you. So many to look at. So I hope you've learned something and learned about the differences in CPR for adults and children and infants. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.